Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a hot minute, but I'm back. So if you guys are like me and your Instagram account has been bombarded with Timu, or T Timu, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Timu advertisements, uh, you're not alone, man. Mine is just swamped. Now, I saw one of these guys advertise. It's for making dowels. You can make a variety of different sizes. Now this is in, um, in metric. I was looking for an imperial one. I just couldn't find it. I'm sure it's out there. It's in metric. Now I bought this with my own money. It was, uh, I think about 20 bucks. So there's a variety of different kinds here on Timu's website. And they range in from $21.99, $24.89. There's one for 17 bucks, 38 bucks. Now I bought mine some time ago. I don't remember what I paid. Well, here's one for $16.79. They have free shipping too, which is awesome. It took a little bit to get here. It's not like Amazon, it's not next day. I think it took a couple weeks. And um, I was a little nervous that it wouldn't come. I thought it was gonna be a scam, but yeah, whole different variety. All right, so let's move over to the workbench and we'll check this thing out. So it comes in this cute little brown box and it's well packaged, some foam. Comes with a, some Allen keys and some screws. The jig itself and that is it there is no instructions there's no qr code or anything like that to scan so we're gonna have to figure this out on our own all right let's take this thing apart a minute so we can get a better look at the cutter head in this so this is the cutter head itself and it comes with a carbide blade or knife i don't know what you want to call it blade knife whatever and you can rotate it four times which is pretty cool Essentially the way this works is just like a pencil sharpener and you just spin it around to whichever size hole you want for the dowel you're going to make and uh, you just drop your nut in there and you tighten it down. So that part is pretty simple. That's easy to figure out. Now the part that confuses me the most about this jig and mind you I'm no dummy and I paid attention in school. How do you fit a square peg into a round hole? I don't understand that part. So I have an idea. So I'm gonna to try to make a dowel using the biggest hole here. And I got my caliper set up to measure what that diameter is. 0.797, so it's a little bit heavy on three quarters of an inch. So my plan is I'm gonna to go to the table saw and I'm gonna cut a piece of wood to 0.79 of an inch square. And then from there, we'll figure out what we have to do next to get this to fit into that hole. Just like you saw, I have four different species of wood here I'm gonna test out. I have maple, walnut, pine, and then red oak. I also did my best that I could to center a screw in the end and I clipped the head off. And I'm gonna put that in my drill so that it can spin. I think that's gonna be better than trying to do it by hand. And uh, we'll see how centered I got it. It's close, but I don't think it's perfect. It's like 9.30 in the evening and I've been working all day. I'm pretty tired, so it's good enough. How do we get a square peg into a round hole? That is the question. Now, my idea is I'm gonna whittle this down to a point and hopefully that's enough to get it started. We'll see if this works. So let's give that a try. These Ulfa knives are dangerous, so be careful. Okay, it fits the hole. Let's try this. And by the way, my first test piece is a piece of pine. All right, it's in the drill. It's not centered very well, but I think it's gonna be good enough. I really hope this works. Let's try it out. We'll stick it in the hole and go. Huh. I gotta tighten my drill. No, all my screw is doing is just driving into the wood. Okay, okay, this is what I had to resort to in order to get it to fit in my drill. That screw there, the drill, it just wanted to drive it straight into the wood until it just came right out of the chuck. So 
That idea did not work. Man, as you can see, it made a dowel, but man, is that gnarly. Just some 100 grit. Man, there's a lot of tear out in there. It's gonna take a lot of sanding to get rid of that. So, I mean, this is pine. Pine's pretty bad for, for stuff like that. So let's try some hardwoods and we'll see how that works. Okay, next up is red oak. Okay, a little bit of sandpaper. Yeah, quite a bit of tear out on that as well. Take a lot of sanding to get rid of that. All right, let's try some walnut now. I wonder if going slow will be better. Let's find out. I would say it makes no difference. So let's just go full sand. Gnarly. And that too had some tear out. Take a lot of sanding to get rid of that as well. More sanding than I would wish to do. Last but not least, we have some maple and I'm prepared to be disappointed because I think it's gonna have pretty bad tear out just like the rest of them. Why would this be any different, right? Let's give it a go. Do a bit of sandpaper. I went quite a bit slower and there was very little tear out. There's a little bit there, but not bad. That is pretty good. Well, what can I say? For 20 bucks, you get what you get, right? You can't really expect awesome results. The maple was the best. I think that is the way to go, is to go slow with your feed, but fast with your drill speed. And I think you should be able to get pretty decent results. Now, if you just need dowels for pinning projects for adding strength to butt joints or something like that, this is probably good enough for that. You'll never see the tear out when it's buried inside a piece of wood. So, yeah, I mean, I'll leave it up to you guys. If you think it's worth the 20 bucks, yeah, go to Timu and buy one. So that's it for this video guys. If you liked it, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and um, please hit the notification bell and we'll see you in the next one.